Well, there it says, Ethiopia Ministry. My name is Mark. I think I'm in the right place. That's good. <laughs> Ethiopia is in East Africa. You know, I've quizzed people and asked them, do you know where Ethiopia is? And they think, and yeah, it's in South America. Um, I've had some people say, it's a small island in the Mediterranean. <laughs> so Ethiopia is there. And the horn, this is called the Horn of Africa. Kind of like a rhino horn. The capital city is Addis Ababa. But today I'm going to take you to a very small village called Mekki. And I'm going to introduce you to some friends of mine. Do you see this little arrow here? The red arrow? That's where Mekki is. They don't have a map with, uh, that addresses such small villages. Now this next, this next map, nope, this next screen, in Mekki, they built a mud brick Bible college. And it is a really special place. God really shows up there. All of the surrounding churches pitched in what they could to build this Bible college. The doors, they don't have doors yet. They don't have windows yet. But they have a hunger after God that has really impressed me. I want to go, I'm going to move one slide ahead here. Because Mekki is where that red symbol is. 96% Muslim. So now I'll go back and talk about the Bible College. I just told you about the local Cali Hewitt churches that pool their resources. And this spring, there'll be 13 new graduates one of the wonderful things about this Bible college is students at the college are supported by their little village. If they don't have the money, they'll bring eggs or chickens or barley or corn as, as a barter system to pay for the student to be there in the Bible college. With the agreement that after Bible college, they will come back to the village and work as an evangelist in that very same village where they grew up. Right in the center of where the Muslims live. There are 10 missionaries that we did some training with on this last trip who are ready and primed to go out onto the field. They're not just idly sitting by and waiting for uh, financial help to come. They're out in their villages doing the work of evangelism, even though they're just dirt, dirt poor, barely have enough uh, to, to live on. One young woman, and I'll point her out in a next, in a slide or two. She, the first week that she was in her village, she had 10 converts to Christ. And now that same young woman in that village has a small church, little building, stick in mud. And she's the evangelist, not a team, just her single young woman. So brave. They've all counted the costs um, to work in a Muslim dominated area in a Muslim stronghold. On this next slide, I'd like Bruce to tell the story of what happened here. The pastor's family lived in this house. You want to come up and share that story? You do a lot better at this story than I do, Bruce. I don't know about that. <laughs> we had a pastor training. 
our salvation in Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe then it was a year later we went back and we asked those that had attended, have you seen God at work? And one of the young evangelists said, well, after the last training on Christ, our Savior, we went back and I started sharing Christ in the gospel in my village. <clears throat> and he said, 17 people came to know the Lord. He said, well, then the Muslims came and built mm. our house. Mm. Mm. While they were sleeping. Aww. They fled for their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so then... Uh, the other Ethiopian churches heard about this and took an offering to help them rebuild their house at this location. Mm -hmm. So they met them at this location and gave them the money. People from the village, about a hundred of them, surrounded them. They didn't know what they were going to do. So they got on their knees and began to pray. And after about 15 minutes, the people asked, started to ask them, what are you doing? What are you praying? They're saying, we were praying that God would help us to forgive you. Mm -hmm. And that you would come to know the love of God and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And be reconciled with God and have eternal life. Mm -hmm. That's what we were praying. Mm -hmm. And that somehow you would come to know the love of God and his forgiveness and have eternal life. And so the people got nervous mm -hmm. and disbanded. He said, shortly after that, I became good friends with the village chief. And he said, now there are 200 baptized believers mm -hmm. and 400 people coming to church. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't hold a grudge against those Muslims that burned their home. Yeah. They had quickly asked for forgiveness so they could move on. And out of those ashes, the church has blown the doors open. Mm -hmm. So this is the environment that those young evangelists are going into. Very hostile. Lots of terrorist activities. When Bruce and I were there on this last trip, seven churches were simultaneously burned to the ground and it was orchestrated by the police chief of the village. She got taken to prison. The church continues to move ahead and move on. It's remarkable to me how big their hearts are and how close to Christ they walk. But even in the face of mounting pressure and terrorist attacks, they're willing to win the lost for Christ. They go where most of us would never go, and they do it willingly and with happy hearts. We met these young evangelists. Bruce and I and two other young men uh, had some training there for um, several days. So we got to spend two days training these wonderful young people. They're not all young either. One man has four kids, is married and has four children. But what they all have in common and all need is financial support. And they're not asking for much. $100 a month for a single person and $150 a month for a couple or a family. There's Mario, and he's that's um, the man on his right is the translator, but he's also the area director of the Kali Hewitt Church, and he is responsible for receiving the support and giving it out to the um, to the evangelists. And here's our dear friend Bruce uh, doing the same thing, teaching. So the dirt floor of the church little plastic chairs, and they sit on benches in the Bible college. No chairs, just benches. I don't know if that's so they don't fall asleep or it's not easy, but they do it. 
At the end of our training time, we had a, a prayer time to commission them to service. They love the Lord. We also had a training for the pastors and leaders of the Mekki area. And this is our gigantic crowd. Mm -hmm. This man here in the yellow shirt with the coat on, the, the man has his hand on his chest. Mm -hmm. That's Pastor Zarahun, and he's responsible, personally responsible for planting over 40 churches in hostile areas where Muslims in Muslim villages. He's an amazing man. And God has blessed me with a friendship with Pastor Zarahun and really enabled us to do really amazing things with his students and leaders in that area. Now was the time to support these people going into the mission field. You know, sometimes an opportunity, a window of opportunity comes and it may not come again, especially in Ethiopia, because with a, with a change of leadership, Christians could be no missionary activity could go on. And so Christians are, they have a bee in their bonnet and a fire in their belly. to do the work of evangelism while they have time. Like the verse says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it's day. For when the night comes, no more work. These are some young kids that we had, um, not in this last trip, but a few trips ago, this young man, Jared, went with me. Everywhere we go, we've got kids that are eager. I opened the gate, and these, these kids were kind of standing out outside the gate, and so I snapped their photo. But when I look in this little boy's eyes, so eager. But I also see the need of Ethiopia in that little boy, a hunger for truth. For four or five years, I have wanted to go to this very primitive village to share the gospel. It has never had a Christian witness in this village. It's a very small village, but it, it was took two days for us to get to that little village. And that, when you got into outside the village, the winding road was more like a goat trail than it was a, a road. And I realized... After that trip on my way back home, as I was reflecting about sharing the gospel with those people, four years earlier, I was real eager to go, but always something came up so we couldn't, couldn't go to that village. We shared the Jesus film on the side of one of the mud huts. We tacked a sheet up there. And we had a battery-powered projector chokes me up when I think about it. Um, we're under the starlit sky and we're hearing the cattle mooing and the goats kind of settling down for bed and the chickens trying to find a place to roost. Yeah. And we're showing the Jesus film. It's kind of a surreal experience. And at the end, an Ethiopian pastor gave an altar call. Asked them, is, does anyone here want to follow Christ on the path of truth? If you do, raise your hand. Well, they have never, never been at a Christian church where you politely raise a hand. They all stood up and stick both of their arms up like somebody had a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I surrender. I surrender. At the end of our time there, of that evening, in the morning, the next morning, one of the chiefs in the village told me, we are ready to follow truth. And Jesus, in that film, proved to us that Jesus is the truth. Four years before, maybe they wouldn't have been ready. Two years before I got there, maybe they wouldn't have had ears to hear the truth. But God, in his perfect timing, 
allowed us to go to that tiny, tiny village. No electricity, no running water, mud huts on a hill, chickens in the house and all around. But God found a home in the little tiny village of Mega. I want to pray, and then if we have, if you have questions, I'll I'll do some uh, a- answering your questions. Father, I look at this little boy and his face, and how eager he is, and I just see hunger there, and it burdens my heart in a good way for truth to be shed abroad in this marvelous country of Ethiopia. Lord, let us have a fire under our feet. We don't know how long the door will hold open for us to share the good news. So help us to train leaders wisely. Help us to go and serve these evangelists. Raise up partners that will stand with these evangelists as they minister in some of the most scary places on the on the planet. Bless my friends as they go out to share the good news. May each of them have ministries that are fruitful and abound that many souls would be saved through their ministries, Lord. In your matchless, precious name, Amen.